What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to System Universe Book 2 Torrent by Sunrise CV. Chapter 33 The City Lord. Bradley and the other guards rushed back to the city. When they arrived, he tasks one of his men with delivering Alicia to her home, while he and the remaining guards hurried back to the city lord's manor along with Clay. Bradley was now filled with anxiety after meeting the purple-eyed man. He didn't know how he was going to explain everything to Lord Torrent. The higher-ranked and Lord's personal guards all knew about the mysterious Derek Hunt, and there were standing orders not to offend the man until the city lord learned more about him. The city lord hadn't placed Derek Hunt high on his list of priorities, which is why not many of the other guards knew about him. Of course, rumors had spread about the man obtaining a crown membership, but not much more than that. Only the more influential in the city knew of the man's name, and that he had received, and had received a more accurate description. Hopefully, the Lord would take pity on him and his men, as he was able to at least save the young master's life. He was also able to obtain some information about the other man's power. He didn't have a clue how to describe it other than more terrifying than any other person I've ever met. But before he had completely collected his thoughts, Bradley was standing before the doors to the manor's great hall, waiting to be seen by the city lord. Soon the doors opened and Bradley was greeted by Captain Herrett, the captain of the guards and the leader of the city lord's personal guard. The man was actually from the capital and assigned to guard the city lord by the lord's father. Bradley had told Clay that he was under orders from the city lord to protect him, but his orders had actually come down from Captain Herrett. Bradley, what is it? What is so urgent that you need to speak directly to the city lord and are unable to write a proper report? Captain Harry qu questioned. Captain, sir, young Master Clay had a run-in with Derek Hunt today and was lucky to have gotten out alive, Bradley replied. The captain furrowed his brow. Let's go. He motioned for Bradley to follow and led him through the great hall towards a man sitting on the seat higher than all the others. The Great Hall looked like a miniature throne room. It wasn't Bradley's first time being in it, but it was still a sight to behold. The Great Hall doubled as a dining area for celebrations and such. As of right now, the hall was empty, apart from the single seat that the city lord occupied. But during celebrations and when there were guests, servants would bring tables and decorations to accommodate the party. Captain Harrett and Bradley approached the man in the high seat, flanked by guards on either side. He looked nearly identical to Clay, but he kept his golden hair trimmed and neat, with a goblet in his hand, resting on the arm of the chair, and his laid-back manner. He gave off a regal air. He seemed to be only in his early twenties, but Bradley knew that was because of his high vitality stat that he obtained when he was younger. Clay had followed his father's example in that regard. The easiest way to invest in vitality without squandering your stat points was to have a defensive class. Of course, that way of leveling was painful, but it was a price one would have to pay to appear younger. Hmm, the city lord said. You are Bradley, correct? Yes, lord. It's an honor that you remember my name, Bradley replied. Of course, the guard laughed. Herod picked you out of the bunch of rabble to protect my son. How could I forget? It is my honor to have received such a task. Now, why are you here? I hope it's for something important, the Lord said with squinted eyes. Y yes, Lord. It is about a task, and the man Derek Hunt. Malcolm Torrent frowned at that. What do you mean? What do the two of them have to do with one another? Here it goes, Bradley thought. Sir, normally they would have nothing to do with one another, but today I was guarding the young master out in the noble hunting grounds. He brought along that merchant girl, Alicia, and a commoner boy. The young master planned on... He stopped. How am I supposed to say that the young master planned on robbing and killing a young teenager? The city lord appeared irritated at his hesitation. Spit it out, Bradley. Yes, lord, he replied. The young master had planned on... Taking the commoner boy's possessions, Bradley gulped, waiting for the lord's reply. And, the city lord said. Bradley spaced out for a moment. Does he not care that the young master was stealing from a commoner? He shook that thought out of his head. Yes, um, he hesitated again, but forced himself to continue. 
When the young master finally struck, the boy showed remarkable ability to dodge and move, avoiding any fatal blows. Then he healed himself with a potion. That was when the young master called for myself and the other guards. We finished off the monster he was fighting and prepared to take care of the commoner. When he gave the order, Derek Hunt came out of the forest clapping, Bradley said. At this point, both the captain and the city guard were f and the city lord were frowning. Why was that man there? Lord Torrent asked. Sir, apparently he knows the boy personally. They acted almost like master and disciple. Mr. Hunt talked to the boy about the fight when he appeared. They continued on casually like the rest of us weren't even there. Finally, the young master was unable to take it anymore, and he called for both of their deaths, the guard recounted. The captain winced, and the city lord's frown deepened at that. What happened next? Captain Harrett commanded. Captain, my lord, I've never... I've never... Bradley began shaking uncontrollably. I've never felt such power. One word from the man, and it was all I could do to stay on my feet. The young master is still in shock, and the merchant girl ended up unconscious on the way back. But he let you live, the lord asked. Yes, he said that we would all have been dead if it wasn't for someone called Alana. He said she asked him not to kill anyone important today, so he didn't. He said that if I wanted to thank anyone to thank her, Bradley replied, Alana. Alana Swan! The city lord nearly jumped out of his seat. Do you know who that is? No, sir. She's the owner of the Crown Restaurants. All of them, the Lord nearly yelled. Bradley was just transitioning to one of more, the more important guards. The inner workings of the Crown Restaurant were so high above him, he had never worried about learning anything more about them. All he knew was that he couldn't dine there and that he should never make a scene or allow the young master to make a scene there. Bradley couldn't believe his ears. He had only done a small amount of research on Derek Hunt when he heard the captain talking about him and sending messages to him. All he knew was that he had a pet bunny and that he somehow received a membership card. It wasn't his job to investigate the man, so he left it at that. The city lord sighed. So he left you all alive, and the only reason he did so was because the owner of the Crown Restaurant asked him not to kill my son. He shook his head. Other than the power you felt, is there anything else you can tell me about him? When he got angry... The purple in his eyes expanded to cover all of the white. It was like how when someone with a powerful fire affinity channels their ability through their body and their irises turn red. I've never seen anyone with purple before, though, and definitely not encompassing their whole eye. He also channeled lightning through his bare hands. I'm sure of it. It was blue instead of purple, lightning replied. A purple element, but also lightning. Can't be royal, right? The city lord mumbled to himself. He turned and looked at Captain Harriet. Harriet, have you heard of anyone having purple element affinity before? Nothing tangible, Harriet said. An extremely high affinity with lightning may get a dark blue, enough to be mistaken as purple. Other than that, maybe gravity, gravity or dark? Harriet looked at Bradley. Are you sure it was purple and not black? Bradley nodded. Definitely purple. You can ask the young master and the other guards. Hmm. Well, we'll table that for now. Is there anything else? The Lord asked. Y yes, Lord, Bradley gulped. He, Mr. Hunt, said he'd be paying the city lord a visit soon, and there was no need to send him any more invitations. He said that you, uh, you have his attention now. The city lord's face turned slightly red, and he gritted his teeth. A crashing sound came from the floor as his goblet lay crumpled on the ground, wine spilling out of it. He said that, did he? He said rhetorically. Bradley, the city lord said, why is it that you did not know that the kid was related to the man? If I'm not mistaken, the man arrived with a bunny and a teenage boy with dirty blonde hair in tow. Did you not do any research on my son's latest target before you let him attack? He finished in a yell. Sir, that is not it. We, uh, I had guards trailing the boy for over a week now. The boy never made contact with that man while we were trailing him. Other than practicing the Adventurer's Guild and doing small tasks with the merchant girl, he stayed at the inn, Bradley quickly answered. Is that so, the Lord said. Still, it is your fault that you did not investigate thoroughly. Bradley bowed his head. Y yes, sir. 
Starting today, you're stripped of your rank. You'll go back with the rest of the rabble where you belong. You're lucky I don't just kill you now and be done with it, the city lord said. Herod, see to it that my orders are followed. You get my son a new personal guard? Dismissed. Yes, sir, Herod nodded slightly and took a hold of Bradley's arm, leading him out the back of the hall. Derek Hunt. We'll see, we'll see, Bradley heard the city lord mutter just before the door swung closed behind him. And that is the end of chapter 33. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have fun, guys.